Hey, it's Matt here, and today I'm going to show you the fastest way I've found to deploy pretty much anything in only a few minutes on Repl.it. Okay, so what I have here is a React app, but I really want to emphasize that this tutorial will work for pretty much any application you can deploy on Replit. So whether you have a Python uh, app, whether that's like Streamlit or an API, or if you're using a React app, regardless of the framework, I'm using Vite here, but it could be a Next.js app, really anything, or any other language, because a lot of languages work on Replit, you'll be able to deploy them with a similar process. I'll call out the points in this tutorial where things differ so that you can do your own research and tailor things to the application you're deploying. Um, but I'll also call out the points that are the same. And most of this tutorial will be the same. I think if you follow this, you'll understand conceptually exactly what we're doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you this app. So this is an electric field visualizer. It uses some electric field equations to build a cool little visualization. And if I do like an NPM run dev, uh, I'm going to get a little field here on localhost and we can play with this. You know, we can adjust the grid size and the field strength. This was a fun little weekend project and I even threw in uh, dark mode uh, there for y'all. So that's what we're playing with. And it's a React app um, using Vite as like the development server. Uh, and it compiles to a set of static HTML files, much like a blog or a website, all that JavaScript and HTML is being run in the browser, which means the deployment will look a little bit different. But we'll talk about that later. So the first thing I'm going to do is git init. And that's going to initialize git in our repository. If you don't have git installed, that is a prerequisite to this tutorial. Um, and then I'm going to git add dot and then git commit in it, just a simple commit message. And now all of these files are tracked in our version control system. We're going to switch on over to GitHub. Uh, if you don't have an account, create one there first. Um, and we're going to create a new repository to upload these files. So now we're in GitHub and I'm going to create a new repository. I'll call this uh, electric viz and I'll be the owner of it. I won't configure anything else now, but you might want to add some details, give it some polish, etc. All we're going to do is copy this second command that's going to push an existing repository from our command line. So back in our app, we're going to paste this in and hit enter. Just like that, all the files should be available in GitHub. So back in GitHub, if I hit refresh to reload this page, you can see now we have all of those files here. Um, so once that's done, I'm going to copy the clone command, uh, the HTTPS clone command for this repo, and we're going to head over to Replit. We're in Replit now. I'm going to create a REPL. I'm not going to start with a template. I'm not going to create anything with the agent, but you should if you haven't yet. It's pretty fun. Um, but instead, I'm going to start from a URL with GitHub. Uh, so I'll paste this command in and click import from GitHub. Uh, and now what Replit is doing is it's cloning uh, that repository. It's creating a new REPL, um, which is an environment, right? It has its own file system. It has its own command line. It's an Ubuntu container under the hood. Um, and it's configuring it for me. And what Replit should do is recognize that this is an NPM project, a, a node project. And when I click run, it's going to go ahead and install packages um, and set everything up and then run the actual application. Now, the reason Replit knows what's working is because of this dot uh, replit file. So if you don't see a dot replit file in your directory, you might have to click the three dots and click show hidden files. But once you do that, you should see this dot replit file. And Replit configured uh, some of the, the prerequisites here, most notably the run command. Um, so if Replit didn't detect the type of repo that you have or didn't install any prerequisites, you might have to install Python or install Node. Often that's as simple as just running something like Python in the command line and Replit will just know, you know, in the shell, Replit will just know uh, what you're trying to do and you just hit Y and it'll install Python. And you can see what happened effectively is that it added this Python command. So if you don't have any of the prerequisites installed, just figure out um, the necessary module and then add that uh, to the modules uh, command. And you can do that via our documentation or the um, packages, or rather dependencies uh, pane. So I'll head over to the dependencies pane. Um, you can see it'll, it'll help you out with some of the advanced dependencies in that systems tab. Um, so with everything installed, it looks like our app is running. I'm going to head over to WebView. Let's see what we got here. And if nothing shows when you click WebView and th but think you know things are running, you might have to go to the networking tab and um, map the port. So what we're doing here is uh, saying, hey, we want to expose that port to the WebView tab. Um, and then often you just have to do a quick refresh or maybe even close and open the WebView tab. So I have my app here. 
Looks like everything is working just as it was before. And I want to emphasize what we just did, right? We took our local development environment, pulled that into Replit through version control, um, and then basically uh, configured a remote development environment in Replit. So we have something that's exactly the same as what we're doing locally, but it's running on Replit servers, which is pretty cool. Um, and so now, you know, Replit deployments really are a snapshot of this deployment environment. So we're going to take a snapshot of this and make it live on the internet so anybody can use it. Um, you know, you can skip that step, right, by just building in Replit. But we want, I wanted to show you how to do this with any project, any project you might have on your computer um, so that, you know, you know how to do this going forward. Uh, maybe in the future you start in Replit, maybe you don't. It's all good. Um, so now we're going to just deploy it. And we have four different types of deployments here. I'll run through these really quickly. We're going to use a static deployment, but reserved VMs are always on servers. So you can think about it like something that's just continuously running. If you want um, just to have a server running in the background and then every so often, maybe it's an API, maybe you make a request to it, it handles that request. Reserved VM, best shot, fixed um, amount of resources, always running. So you know exactly how much you're going to pay every month. It's pretty, uh, pretty cut and dry. Auto scale deployments are a little bit more advanced. So with auto scale deployments, um, they will scale up or down to handle the amount of demand. So say a ton of people are using your website or you know whatever your build, your app. Um, auto scale deployments can uh, not only spin up from zero to one, so turn on dynamically, but they can also scale horizontally. So multiple instances will fire up to handle increases in traffic. Um, and that's pretty cool because it means your users get a seamless experience regardless of how many of them are visiting uh, or how many users are engaging with your app. At the same time, auto scale deployments also scale down to zero. So they'll switch off if no one's using your app. Now, what that means is that unlike reserved VMs, you don't have a fixed cost every month for that deployment. But what it does mean is that you might have a lower cost because when no one's using your app, the app isn't running. So in some sense, it's kind of like, you know, it'll turn off if you don't use it. It's like a nest. It's like a smart thermostat. With reserve VM, you're just running the AC all the time. Uh, auto scale deployments, you know, your nest knows you're not home. It's just like chilling. You know, your, your house can be a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler or whatever. And uh, you're not paying that extra bill. So auto scale deployments, smart therm thermostat, reserve VM, continuous temperature. But there are certain things where you might want a continuous temperature, right? Like if you have a greenhouse, you don't want to like kill your plants. If you have an API, people need to make requests in real time. Uh, so you want that continuous on functionality. So each of them have their own uh, uses. Static deployments are for client side code. So if you have JavaScript or HTML that's running entirely in the browser, entirely on the client side, like a blog or like this application, um, that's what a static deployment is for. That's what we're deploying today. Scheduled deployments, uh, that's sort of like a cron job or something that you want run every hour, every day, every minute, whatever, right? Maybe you have a Python script, you just want hosted somewhere and you want it to run every day at midnight and update some data set. Scheduled deployment is your best bet. We're gonna set up our deployment here though and we're gonna get on with it. So I'll call this electric viz, I don't really want the one. Um, we'll call this electric viz mat. Public directory that Vite builds to is dist and then the build command is npm run build. That's pretty straightforward. I'm going to click deploy and we'll talk about what's going on here. Um, so you can see the deployment is preparing uh, in the background. Replit's going to um, take care of all like the back end work, build this, push it live to a site. It should be ready pretty quickly. Um, you can see we're already getting started here, uh, but you can see in the Replit file, some things were added. So Replit added the deployment target as static. Um, and then a build command. And so this is kind of what's going on under the hood. That's how Replit handles that deployment. And for our Vite app, right, our build command is just running Vite build. We know that's going to the dist directory. And then Replit is serving that uh, via our own processes. So now I have this URL. If I click it, I have my app. And this is on its own URL. This is live. This is on the internet. You could go visit this. I'm going to host this on a different website. So don't visit that <laughs> URL. But you know, that was zero to deployed application in only a few minutes on Replit. And this should work for anything that runs on Replit, anything you can put on Git, you can follow the same flow and you can take something that you have running on localhost, you can go from localhost to live in only a few minutes. This is the simplest way I've found for deploying applications. Again, I'm Matt with Replit and this has been deploying pretty much anything using Git and Replit in only a few minutes. Until next time, peace.